Welcome to Women's Take on the Real News Network. I'm joined by Senator Nan Orock. She's a state senator from Georgia. Welcome back. Thank you. So good to be with you. Senator, let's talk about something that is in the hearts and minds and bodies of women, which is health care. Um, and uh, you've been an ardent supporter of the single payer uh, health care that is being proposed by uh, uh, you know, large movements, including the California Nurses Association. Um, and yet, uh, you know, this government and Senator Bacchus, for example, uh, won't even allow it on the table. What do you think of that? I think that's uh, a measure of uh, what's going on politically in this country. We are the only uh, industrialized uh, nation in the world that does not have a uh, universal health care policy in place. And uh, that has much to do with how uh, private sector interests have driven the conversation and the political decision making. We saw what happened uh, during the Clinton, early in the Clinton term, first term. Uh, when it was torpedoed, any, any mention of health reform was torpedoed. And we've continued to see escalating prices uh, to health care and uh, dire consequences of having almost one and a half, you know, what is it, 150 million uh, people nearly that are uninsured and more than that that are underinsured. Women really drive the, the health care decisions in their families. Uh, their voices are very important in this conversation. And I've seen as a woman in, in the state legislature all across the country, uh, at the state level, it's been women legislators who've been introducing uh, reforms to health care. And, and it's, a lot of times it's tweaking. Mm -hmm. it's, it's saying that uh, you cannot deny people uh, w with a certain disease condition the access to their drugs, or you're not allowed to do this, or insurance companies have to cover uh, the uh, contraceptives, FDA-approved contraceptives. If you have an, a, a, a plan to cover pharmaceuticals, mm -hmm. I passed that bill in Georgia. It's been women legislators across the country that have driven that policy, or the uh, the policy around insurance companies having to allow 48 hours in the hospital for a mother and newborn, mm -hmm. or 72. Well, and I'm, I'm simply saying women have been very proactive as policymakers at the state level on health policy, and I expect them to weigh in heavily on this national debate that's going on in Congress. The single payer plan is not on the table. I think that that's a mistake, and I think it underestimates where the American public is. It's listening more to the private sector uh, interest, who have a money interest in the uh, outcome of health care reform, as opposed to listening to the people. And uh, we're certainly, uh, around the country, I introduced a resolution in Georgia in the Senate uh, calling for support of 676, H.R. 676. President Obama is saying that if he were to start from scratch, that single-payer system might be feasible. And in fact, he, su he supported uh, such uh, a plan when he was a candidate. Uh, and now that he's in office, he's saying this may not be feasible. Um, it's not feasible. Why? It's not feasible because the votes are not there in Congress for single-payer. That's why it's not feasible. And, and what about Senate? Uh, no, uh, well, Cong Senate is a part of Congress. You know, right. the House right. and the Senate yeah. are, are, the, are the, the Senate is a very much a stopping mm -hmm. place for a lot of things these mm -hmm. days. We mm -hmm. need uh, we have a very slim uh, majority, slender, slender majority there as Democrats, mm -hmm. and uh, we do not have all the Democrats on board. And that's I, I, all those that I have a lot of confidence in the Progressive Caucus mm -hmm. uh, in Congress. Uh, we, we hear from all quarters mm -hmm. that a single-payer plan uh, lacks viability because the votes are not there in Congress for that plan. And uh, if, if the Democrats um, have control of the Congress um, and, and they are not supporting the single-payer uh, plan that President Obama thinks is a good plan, uh, what are the problems? What, is, what are the issues? Why is it not feasible uh, within Congress? Precisely because I think the deep pocket special interests mm -hmm. uh, are very strong drivers of policy in Washington. That's no surprise. We see it at every turn. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's manifesting again this time. They know that they have a president who's much more resolute around making change and who has a broad, broad base of support uh, for his presidency at this point, who came in with a mandate. And they, they, I believe the private sector feels they're up against a formidable mm -hmm. foe. Mm -hmm. uh, however, that doesn't, the, 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 that the, he cannot change uh, 
uh, water into wine mm -hmm. uh, just because he's but Barack Obama. But he does Obama. have a mandate. He, he was elected right. on a and, mandate and boy, to has he bring been, health care. That's right. And he has been he has been making change uh, every day since he got here. Uh, we, he he added uh, ten, ten million more children. For, to have coverage under the, the uh, Children's Health Insurance Plan, which had been stalled in the water under the Bush administration, and many programs were in dire uh, straits down in the states because mm -hmm. of the lack of federal money. Mm -hmm. So he's done huge steps uh, already. He can't turn uh, water into wine, though. He cannot do it single-handedly. So I'm part of the voices from the states uh, urging that single-payer be looked at as a viable option, and in fact, the one that makes the, be the best sense dollar-wise uh, I am not optimistic that that point of view will prevail in Congress. I, it's very important to get a public health option. That's where the battle lines are drawn right now mm -hmm. in Congress. Mm -hmm. Like it or not, that's the real politics in Congress, right. is are we going to have a public health option in a plan or not? We've got to fight vigorously and furiously to have a public health option. I want a single payer plan. A public health option could be a step in that direction and, and, and lay the will groundwork supports, for later. And Will is supporting uh, your position? No, I'm not speaking for the Women Legislator Lobby when I talk about okay. that health policy. And what is the uh, will, Will's position? On Will's, posi will's position is that we need to uh, make wiser use of our money and uh, not blow all our dollars on the military spending that's that's ill-conceived, mm -hmm. unnecessary, and actually has bad outcomes often, and that we should redirect unnecessary bloated military spending into human services, funding human services, human needs, and environmental protections. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, if we have a massive and sweeping reform of the military budget, that will free up money for us to do what needs to be done in the health care arena, but that won't of itself ensure that we have a single payer plan. It's a political debate going on in this country. I urge the voices for single payer plan to be resolute and uh, loud. And uh, I also understand in the world of real politics, the votes aren't there in Congress at this point from some of my staunchest allies and pit progressives that we've helped elect in Congress. Uh, know that the votes are not there for a single payer plan at this point, but I think that is no reason not to raise that as a policy option. Uh, if sadly it does not prevail, it is raised and fight like hell for the public health option to be included right now. Thank you, Senator Orak, for joining us on the Real News Network, and thank you for joining us on the Real News My Network. My pleasure. Thank you.